thanks for tuning in to our Northeast Macomb County TV6 focus program. I'm your host, Eric Schneider, and uh, I think I have some really interesting information for you. Uh, a while back, I was lucky enough to be um, at a presentation that was done uh, about foster adoption system, and it really touched me. And uh, so I asked M Mr. Mark Moore here to uh, come in and, and uh, sort of talk about it and maybe could give some information out to people. And we may be able to change, change somebody's life um, and really make a big difference. Mark, I want to thank you for coming in and, and uh, sitting down with me. Thanks for having me. So you are a foster awareness advocate. I am. Uh, so what does that entail? I, I, have a, I have a pretty good idea, but I want to hear it in your words. I you know, uh, I, over the last few years since I've been involved in foster care and, and uh, really started to learn the ins and outs and what's good and what's bad, and, you know, I felt like I needed to do more than just foster some children. And that's a big thing on its own. Um, but I felt like more people needed to know. More people needed to know about how to change the way they view foster care and uh, encourage more people because there's a serious shortage of foster parents in in the states and in the united states and in michigan and uh i just felt like i could do more and, and this is just all i could think of that i could do was to become an advocate and and just start talking about it and so how did you actually get started into the the program yeah that's a great story uh, i uh i met a girl um, who was a licensed foster parent and she hadn't gotten a placement yet and I was at a time in my life where my idea was uh, was about to be traveling and and doing things for myself and uh, I got a text message one day uh, that had a picture of a of a little two and a half year old uh, blue-eyed girl uh, with curly hair and uh, I texted back and I said who is that and uh, make a long story short um, fell in love with this little girl and uh, that's when I first became exposed to foster care and and uh, and at that point forward uh, started to uh, I, I became her alternate caregiver and uh, went to court dates and started to really see what the system's all about and how these children um, get into the system in the first place and and uh, um, then I got licensed and I moved into her house you know that's kind of how that went <laughs> so how many kids are in foster care oh uh, you know that's the one thing that i when i talk to people on the street that uh and that would be just about everybody um we just didn't don't know and i i had no clue and right now in the united states and this information is very current current through the end of the year of 2018 in the united states there's currently 442,000 and and uh, uh children in foster care in the state of Michigan, uh, there's just slightly under 14,000. And uh, in the state of Michigan, 8,000 of those are under, are six and under. And, uh, you know, another 202,000 nationwide are, are six and under. So, you know, as I began to look at numbers like that, I realized that this was something I, I just, I, I couldn't sleep at night, you know, not, not telling people that. So obviously this has really changed your life um, in many ways, I, I think. You know, it has, um, it's changed the way I think about how I'm going to spend the rest of my life. It's changed the way uh, I think about giving back. Um, I was searching for a sort of a new thing to, to give back, and this is like giving back to 110%. And there's something about um, uh, children that, uh, you know, that's our future. And, you know, when uh, you sit down with a, a two-year-old at seven o'clock in the morning and, and brush their hair and, and you're watching them learn new things, you know? So it changed the direction of my life and it changed the way that I think about a lot of things, honestly. And, uh, you know, I've seen things that, and learned things that maybe I don't wanna know. Um, but by the same token, I've also found that there, those are things that more of us should know. There's a lot of harsh realities in life, obviously. So, how long does the average child spend in foster care? The, uh, you know, we've had an emergency placement, it's called, um, for as little as 10 days, but the children that are placed in what's called permanent placement or per permanent care, 
um, the process by which either the biological parents uh, reunify with their child um, or that child goes up for adoption, the average time of placement is slightly over 20 months. So a good year and a half. And I'm, I'm assuming that in a lot of those cases, it's actually more than half the child's life in, at many times. So it, it's obviously a huge percentage of, of what that child actually knows. It's a huge percentage of what that child has been exposed to that's positive. So, you know, uh, certainly when you talk about infants and we've picked them up from the hospital five days old, um, when we talk about infants, they're all you know. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the older ones, uh, they haven't had a great positive experience to begin with. So that, that 15 or 20 months that they spend in a positive environment, uh, surrounded maybe by a couple dogs and uh, a couple crazy teenagers is something that they'll remember forever. All right, so let's take a short break here. And when we come back, we'll, we'll kind of get into this a little bit more. Uh, I, I know that you have a lot to say about it and I have definitely have some questions. Uh, so we'll be back in a few minutes and uh, we'll see you then. A house will always look like a house, but what makes a house a home? Laughter. Kindness. Oh, there it is. Love. Hope. Family. Family. Could you provide a home to a local youth in need? Learn more about foster care today and help make a house a home. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming back. And uh, now we're gonna kind of get into the, the nitty gritty of this, of this issue with Mark. And um, I'll start firing some questions at you. All right with that? Sounds good, yeah. All right. I know you're right. This is something I know that, that you're very passionate about and, and it's very easy for us to have a conversation about yeah. it. So I think it's gonna really touch people. So um, let's talk about uh, some of the things that people may think that perhaps foster kids are problems and that they're gonna be trouble at your, at your house and it might not even be safe to bring them home uh, with your so-called normal kids. Uh, oh. why, don't, why don't we talk about that? Uh, let's start right with normal kids because uh, that's one that um, you know, that is, uh, you know, the, the, in a world, in a, in, in a time when everybody's talking about uh, racism and prejudice, um, you know, it, somehow it doesn't translate down to this level. And I, 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 I get hurt because I see the hurt in the eyes of those children. You know, the foster child is really a child that's in the foster system. And I think that's how we need to, that's how we need to view it. They're not different. Um, they're just children who need to be kept safe, warm, and fed, and, uh, and, and given love, and given love. They, many of them haven't experienced that, and, and, and so we try to impart that in their lives. And the whole label thing, um, you know, I, uh, a lot of this you learn by doing, and I made the mistake once, the, the first child that I was exposed to, um, and it's almost still emotional for me, and, and a couple years have passed now because I could... I could see, I could see it in her eyes. But we were at uh, we were at the grocery store, and uh, you know this was common. You know they, um, oh your granddaughter's so cute, and I would say granddaughter, <laughs> and uh, and this one day, uh, this is early in the going, and this uh, the either a lady in line or or the cashier had said, uh, is that your daughter? And uh, um, my response was, and and so. And this child was in the seat looking at me intently, a little three-year-old. And uh, I said, no, that's not my daughter. She's a foster. And the amount of air and energy that I saw get sucked out of that child at that moment was, uh, uh, it killed me, it killed me. I, I felt her pain and I felt my pain because I could tell that for once she felt like she belonged to a family that cared and, and now I just, I, I crushed that for a moment. Yeah. And, um, you know, her and I worked through it and I vowed never to do it again. And, and the kids that are in our care now, we, we, uh, we treat them as our children. We always did. We love them as our own children. And the idea that, you know, you can't love someone that's not your biological child the same way is not true. 
Um, if you don't love these children, you're probably doing it the wrong way. So, you know, the, the labels are, are something that needs to, to change. The other idea is that, uh, you know, foster children all have behavioral problems. And uh, they're going to come in and they're going to smash your TV and, and let your cat on fire are so overstated. You know, uh, you're going to have, of course, children, uh, there's a percentage of children that have behavior problems. Right. Um, but uh, the majority of these children come in scared. They've been removed from their homes. Uh, they don't have any belongings with them. And uh, their only behavior problems is that they've lost love for themselves. And um, they really are just normal children. They're just like our children at home. Sure. And, uh, you know, even the schools and daycare centers, you say that, uh, well, this is, I'm going to try to enroll. I want to enroll my foster child in there. And uh, the lack of awareness is so deep that even the people that are charged with foster, taking care of our children on a daily basis, sometimes lean back. Like, no, whoa, ooh. You know, stigma. Stigma. It's bad. This is bad for all of us. And uh, because these children, they don't deserve that. Yeah. You know, they deserve uh, uh, a normal life as best as possible. And then, you know, and then on top of that, the, the stigma and talk about foster parents and foster homes. Really, if you talk to most people on the street, including my own father, um, you know, uh, my own father, when I told him, he, uh, he said to me that, oh, why, are you guys going to quit your jobs and just make a bunch of money off the system? And, uh, you know, he didn't get it then. He gets it now. Um, old school thought. It still trails with us today and, and sort of pollutes our minds because no one else is talking about it. Right. You know, so foster parents are, you know, all bad and they, they make a ton of money and they, they don't feed the, you know, they feed the children ramen noodle soup, right? And while we, while we buy uh, luxurious things, you know, we're lucky if we break even every month. And, uh, um, you know, those are the things that if we learn nothing else from our sit down today or someone that's listening uh, takes anything away from this, it's know the truth and, and start changing the way you think and talk about it to other people. Yep. Yep. So you, you're in this situation, you get a foster and eventually things change and, and the parents, the, the foster is going to go back to the parents. Uh, you're attached. What's that, what is that like for, for someone? So people can know what to expect. Obviously yeah. it, it's changing. You, you've gone from one end of the spectrum to now you're, it, it's going away. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, um, first of all, I'd like to preface that by saying that's part of the job. Um, if you're in, to, in foster care to give back and help, you have to remember that those are going, that's going to happen. And, uh, you know, knowing grieving skills and, and knowing how to grieve, because truly you are, it's a loss. And it's not your decision. It's, no. it's something that's put on you. You just have to deal mm -hmm. with it, right? Like we had, uh, we had a, an eight-month-old that had been with us since he was five days old. We picked him up at the off, at this hospital. He was abandoned at the hospital, and um, eight months go by, and we were given five days to say goodbye. Well, an infant at that age has already bonded, and we certainly had fallen in love with him. Um, but like I said, when we get the call from the caseworker from DHHS or whoever the governing body is for that particular child, um, it's time to do that. And that, again, that's part of the job now. It hurts, um, but also that, you know, for every child that is, that you adopt or, um, or, you know, stays in your home for longer, there's, you know, there's a, uh, there's children in waiting, um, you know, our agency gets 576 requests for new placements a month, 576 new placements that's statewide, but that's new placements. And, uh, we have 35 homes in our agency, so we can't even handle the load. So once you start adopting, you start taking beds away from the children who really need them. And so you have to really understand where you're at and you have to not necessarily protect yourself, but you have to know that that day is coming and that doesn't make it any easier. There's pain there. Um, but, um, what you get back out of it and, and the level of giving back, like I mentioned earlier, is so great that, um, 
you know, you work through it. And in reality, I mean, that really is what you're trying to do anyways. You want these parents to have their kids back. You, you don't want to... It, it's not a, a battle between a, a foster parent and the real parent. You're just trying to help this kid get through a, a situation. And, and if, if that's what happens, I think in the end, once it's, it's passed, you have to... It's pretty positive, I, I would imagine, right? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely... It's a happy, sad time, right? right? I mean, and the main goal always is, is reunification of the parents. Let's not, you know, let's not take away from that. Some of these parents have just made bad decisions. and they just, Or maybe they've never been taught how to be a parent. Right. So while they're getting their classes and they're doing whatever they need to do, um, you know, really we're just there to uh, support that child and make sure that they're healthy and, and happy when they go back, um, you know, when that happens. But it's, that is the tough thing. Of course. But it is happy, sad, so it's a very strange mixture of all of that, you know? So is there training and, and support that, that, that the foster parents w would receive? Absolutely. Uh, the licensing process is, uh, um, while it's very simple, um, it's, it can be pretty lengthy, um, but that process involves a lot of training, a lot of safety training, um, and then there's uh, continuing education training. You have to do six hours every year, and uh, you know, educating yourself on children never stops, really. So, um, but there is specific classes, and you go through a pretty significant amount of training to get certified and then you got to be licensed through the state so yeah i guess i mean in, in anything that you do there's always you're always learning yeah whether i hope so whether it's, it's positive or negative right okay so uh, so mark this is this has really been eye-opening for a lot of people i think uh what i'd like to do is we'll just take a short break here and when we come back i, I want to really get into the whole changing of the narrative uh because that's really why i got you here because that's yeah. like i said that's the part that really touched me so uh, hold tight, and uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Thanks. don't have a safe place to come home to. Nothing in your world seems right. This is a place where I don't This is a place that I call my home. Help turn things around for a child. Become a foster parent. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I, I was really excited about this show, so uh, I hope this is, is touching people the way that it's touched me. Uh, I'm Eric Schneider, your host today, and I'm here with Mark Moore, who is a foster awareness advocate. And um, we're just going to kind of give you some information that I think is, is, is pretty, um, it's, it, it's pretty strong. I, I think you'll enjoy this uh, for what it is. So, Mark, um, I, I did want to ask you about the fear that some people may have that the actual parents are going to somehow track you down and, and come and, and, um, to your house and, and take their kids back or something. Could you kind of belay those fears? Absolutely. Um, you know, first of all, uh, you know, the, the attitude that CPS and DHHS want to take your child and, and they're, they're, predat they're predatory and, and want those child, children in the system, that's just not going to happen. They don't, they don't want another child in a foster home right now. And, but uh, biological parents, and I, understandably so, don't normally understand that. They, they think that someone's, you know, after them and uh, trying to take their, their child. And... Uh, so as much as they would want to be aggressive or potentially do something bad like that, which would, wouldn't be a good decision, uh, there are safeguards um, in place. And some of these questions that, that I hear, and this is one of them, uh, you know, it's really people looking for reasons not to know more. The um, devil's advocate. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, you know, I will tell you with confidence that um, in the children that we have fostered and, and uh, that we've had contact with, uh, no biological um, 
entity, including grandmothers and things like that, n have our phone number, uh, know where we live, know the daycare in which that child is at, and uh, we'll never know. And uh, you know, we want it that way. Um, it's it's for the safety of the child and uh, the safety of our own children at home. Um, so as much as you know, we could put together a law and order, you know, or an NCIS show, um, you know, about the biological parents tracking down the foster parents to get the child back. Right. Um, there's safeguards set up to make sure that doesn't happen. We cannot post pictures on social media. Um, confidentiality is something that we have to stick to um, uh, very, very much so. I mean, our agency would would uh, would come after us for everybody's that. safety. For, for everybody's for the parents, safety. the fosters, the kids, yeah. everybody involved. Exactly, it, it just it's makes true. more sense. And it allows separation for the parents to do what they need to do to fix the things that weren't in place when their children were taken. I mean, it's designed well. Sure. So let's uh, let's say that uh, somebody out there um, doesn't feel like they could step up to to being a foster parent, but there's got to be ways that they can help other than that um, in support and, and for the organization. What kind of things can people do oh, to, to help? Um, uh, this was something that when I, when, also when I first got involved, I was shocked at how little there was out there as far as resources for foster parents. I mean, um, when a child comes into your life as an infant at five days old, it's not likely that at eight o'clock at night when you're leaving that hospital that you have preemie clothes at home. Um, you know, so helping out the foster system and, and being a foster parent isn't for everybody. Um, it, it just isn't. And finding the organizations that help the, you know, instead of giving your children's clothes to, you know, the large nonprofit resale shops, um, maybe think about giving those items to someplace like the Foster Closet of Michigan, a place like that. Uh, is one of the few places where it's only for foster parents and uh, they have supplies like formula, emergency formula, um, uh, diapers, uh, clothes of all sizes so that between the time which you can get to the store when you need something on the spot you can run in there and pick that stuff up for free. The Foster Closet of Michigan is, uh, is an amazing organization set up to support foster parents. Um, you know, the other places, uh, Friends of Foster Kids uh, is a huge uh, organization that, that does a lot of things. They could use monetary and also seasonal donations. They do a lot of things around Christmas time. You know, remembering that these children come with no belongings. And if they come with clothes, they're generally small and are dirty. And there's maybe one set. So we're talking about toothbrushes. And, and it's amazing that when a child gets his first toothbrush when he's been removed from his home, that that becomes a treasure. Um, and as much as, as sad as that is, you know, to be able to provide that is important. So places like Friends of Foster Kids, uh, Foster Closet in Michigan, uh, Adoption and Foster Care Specialists, Inc., um, Monetary, and uh, about anything household goods. I mean, I can't tell you how many... My girlfriend and I, we, we do a lot of fundraising, and uh, especially around Christmas time, and um, we pick up, uh, we have a couple large organizations, Women's Life, Chapter 911. Great organization. Yeah, they have been incredibly supportive. And, you know, things like um, toddler beds that people have in the basement. You know, a toddler bed may seem like nothing, uh, but someone who's got a toddler that doesn't, that can't be in a crib anymore, we don't all have the time, and many of us don't have the resources to go out and buy a new one. So that's important. Um, so supporting those organizations, Adoption and Foster Care Specialists, um, Inc. out of Lapeer, Michigan Foster Closet, um, Friends of Foster Kids. Um, there's, there's quite a few organizations, but those, those are really the big ones. Okay. So let's, let's get into the narrative and, and how people talk about the kids and, and the parents and the foster parents and, and the things that people say that are stereotypical and um, I, I know that it's the kind of thing that, that, that probably makes you a little bit crazy but um, let, let's just kind of get into changing the narrative because I, I think that's, yeah. really, that's really the strong part of this whole message. You know and that's really as I've spoken at different organizations and you know 
gratefully I spoke at your organization and that's why we're here today. Um, you know, uh, there's a few of them. And, and that's really what if, again, if, if there's nothing else that's taken from today, let's start talking about it differently yep. because that's important. Um, you know, foster parents, number one, uh, don't uh, make a lot of money and uh, lock their kids in the basement. You know, we're, we're bound by licensing and confidentiality and, you know, we have a caseworker gladly in our home once or twice a month. And, uh, you know, we attend the, the court dates, every single one, because we care. And, uh, you know, do we get paid? Yes, um, because we've got to get that child in daycare. And, uh, you know, I will tell you that uh, daycare reimbursement from DHHS is $2.50 an hour. And uh, so we dedicate a lot of our own funds. We're, and yes, we do get money every month. Let's not make, I mean, it, it is what it is. And, um, but we're, we just about break even. Uh, it's not a big money-making venture. It just isn't. And uh, uh, all the foster parents that certainly I know in our circle are doing it because, um, well, we'll just say for the right reasons, because they want to they want to help it, the child that needs love, you know, and, and needs some direction and, and perhaps a chance at a, at a new direction. So then foster children, you know, we have to stop thinking about that child as a foster child. Um, that's really a child that's in the that's lucky. Uh, that child is fortunate enough. We need to start thinking that, oh, you're a foster kid. Right. You're a child in the foster system. That's great. Not like, oh, oh, really? And I'll tell you why. Because these children, first of all, they don't deserve the label. Right. Um, the bottom line is, for every child that's in foster care, there's two more that are being abused and neglected that are flying under the radar, and will may end up in a group home. So we have to change the way, like when we see a foster child, we need to embrace them, not, not stand back. And we have to remember that it's a child in the foster system. We have to get away from calling them foster kids. And they're not all bad. These, this whole thing about normal kids and then the foster kids uh, needs to be addressed. And it, I, I just, uh, it just drives me crazy. And, um, you know, because nothing will deflate a child's self-worth faster than being told, even not intentionally, that they don't belong um, or that they're not loved because they end up blaming themselves. And that's just not true. We need to love them like our own children, and it's just not that difficult. And we, if, we, if we rally around as a community and, uh, and know that that child is a foster child, instead of shying away and not making that phone call or talking to those people anymore, yeah. um, instead, bring a toy. Welcome them to the home, welcome to the community, make that child feel that they're a part of the tribe um, because it really does, it really does take a tribe. Yeah, it certainly does. And, and I think it's easy too for uh, negative connotations and, and negative stories to, to get a lot of attention. Um, I mean, that's just, just the way that, that the news cycle sort of works now. And, and like I, I said before, this was the part that when, I, when you came and spoke at the Lions Club, that um, that really touched me, and that's why I, I really had to have you come in and, and get this message out. I mean, to me, it's just it's um, it's really enlightening, man. I got to yeah. thank you. Absolutely, you know, and um, it's just sad when we as a society know more about adopting animals from the humane society than we know about the fourteen thousand children in our state uh, that are looking for a place where they can find love and be given a new chance. So our community and our society is, has failed a lot of children. And uh, I would just hope to somehow, if I can get just a couple people to change that, maybe get someone to encourage them to, to be a foster parent. I mean, that's what I just want to do. You do a good job of it, man. I gotta, I gotta tell you. Oh, thank is you. there anything I missed? Is there anything else you wanted to, to let people know? Gosh, no. I mean, uh, if you feel led to uh, become a foster parent, uh, there's information that you'll that you'll have. I think uh, adoption adoption and foster care specialists uh, can can get you started in classes if that's not for you. Um, after you look into it, um, think about giving in a different way this next Christmas season or or whenever you go to clean out your basement. Um, you know, know that um, whereas you're getting those organizations and I support them, um, they're going to resell and make money. I want you to know that when you're giving to these organizations, 
your belongings and those clothes uh, not only will help uh, support a child probably today, uh, but for many years to come um, because we've we figure out as we become foster parents that hoarding is sort of a part of our lives, you know. So you know those toys, that wagon, that uh, that car, um, something like that, um, helps make multiple children happy. You literally can make a big difference with some of the simplest things that are just laying around your house. Ah, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, just even little mats that infants can lay on their back and play with mobiles and things like that. I mean, it helps. You know, when you get into the toddler years and older than that, it's little things like that that help take their mind off of what they don't understand what happened to them. And, uh, you know, so we're always very grateful for those things. Great job today. I'm, I'm so glad that I got you to come in here and talk about this. I, I have a feeling that we, we may have uh, raised some awareness and, and made people realize some things that maybe they didn't, they didn't realize before. And thanks, man, for coming in. I t one more thing. Sure. Um, you know, just like it came into your organization, I just want to mention too that if any, if anything that you've heard today um, has has pulled at you to learn more, uh, there is a presentation that I do. If you belong to any one of the nonprofit organizations and feel like this is something you want to take to your membership, um, please contact me or contact Eric or this Rick, this TV station, and we'll set up a time for me to come out and I'll give you that presentation. Just want to thank you for tuning in. And uh, hopefully you got as much out of this as I did when I saw Mark's presentation originally. For NEMC TV6, I'm Eric Schneider, and we'll see you next time.